Good morning, I think. Uh, it's a nice, quiet morning here. So let's write some code. Um, last time, we implemented a very simple ripple effect. And we also found that going out of bounds crashes the game. Um, yeah, I have some faint ideas for how to make the ripple animation better. But first, I feel compelled to clean up the code a bit to make it easier to work with. Um, if you remember seeing this nice red warning or notice error um, in the console of Firefox, that's the first thing I kind of want to get rid of. Um, so I've started by adding a proper doc type to index.html, and that doesn't fix it because there's still no character encoding specified. And so let's move. Let's put um, a meta char set UTF-8 up there, and that should ultimately fix it, yep. And also, I had some issues with the P5 library this morning. Cloudflare was having some trouble, which is kind of odd, but also we don't really need to be hitting the CDNs every time we refresh the page. So I pulled P5, I grabbed the latest build, minified, so then I pulled the uh, 2482 engine down locally as well, and I'm just referencing them directly, so that way when I refresh there's no network requests going on. Okay, so I think that's good for the HTML. Now, there was one other thing I made a comment about, not one other thing, there was something that I wanted to come back to. I think when I wrote this variable, I said that I'm old school because I just instinctively started typing var. But let is a better habit to get into this day, these days, and this is why. Um, var is not scoped, so if I declare a variable inside this function, it Actually, maybe that's not even true anymore. We can test this here. Let's declare test function. Let's run it and then let's... Good, okay. My understanding of let and var is very fuzzy. Block scoped. Oh, more so than just function scoped, it's block scoped. So let in here. Ah, I should have, uh, you know, scrolled down a little bit, maybe. Ah, hasty. Oh well. So that makes sense now. So you can have a let inside a if statement or possibly inside a for loop. Um, so again, I think it's just a better habit to get into, so let's do that. Um, that way, key is only accessible with inside this for loop. And we'll just uh, go through. But one other thing that I definitely know I want to do is what I mentioned and pondered for a slight moment before dismissing was refactoring this chords array into an actual object with keys and values. Pardon me while I get a drink. Okay. So let's start down here where we actually create this thing. <clears throat> the idea is for scene to contain an object with fields or keys that have helpful names, or at least names that are more helpful to humans. And then, so we will do oh, curly, hi curly. Um, we'll do that, and that way for every, every time we log, the uh, location that we come to. Do that. 
then I could just move this here so there's less code. Fewer declarations. Oh man, there we go. Hey, did it. Cool. That's the first step, making scene an object with keys. And up here in update, um, we loop over those keys. Or sorry, loop over the keys in scene. And then we pull out the chords for that position. And here is where we will change it to dot x dot y. And we no longer need to reference horizontal. We can just do that way. And similarly, we no longer need to do frame that way. We can just reference it directly. directly. Um, right. I could just do if it's that one, and then chords one to chords Y, replace all. And oh, got one more to do. One, two, three, four more to do, and then we increment chords dot frame, and that should get us exactly back where we were. Cool. All right, slightly cleaner, more friendly to the people that are using the keyboard. Okay, that didn't take as long as I thought it would, but we're actually seven minutes in, so, you know, not quick, and I didn't want to pad out the previous video with seven minutes of refactoring. I wanted to get to the point of having an animation to look at. Given that, one thing I mentioned last time was that these dots ripple out quite quickly. So let's rein that in. And also I think I want them to be a little, little constrained. Don't want them to ripple out as far. But perhaps the problem is they just ripple out too fast. Um, so I think let's try to do do a slowdown in the animation effect. So if I have a handle to game, which game is declared somewhat globally there, then I can get the frame count. And I'm thinking I didn't, I don't really, okay. Regarding slowing down the game's frame rate, I think that might be a bad idea because that will likely limit how quickly we can process arrow key presses. I guess it doesn't really matter, but because even if I lowered it to 12 frames per second, are you going to be pressing the arrow key more than 12 times a second? Probably not. So maybe we'll start there, just see what it does, right? All right, so here it's part of the game config object, and it's called frame rates. And let's see what happens when we put it set it to twelve. Noticeably slower. Kind of what I was hoping for in an animation, honestly. Sorry about the crashing. We do need to fix that someday. What if we even change it to 8? Is that going to be too jarring? I 
it definitely feels like the input is laggy. So I'm thinking we should just do a bit of throttling on the um, the animation incrementing incrementing blah, of the animation frames right here. So we could do a mod here. I'm not actually sure the right way to do this. That will likely get us. Mm. Right, I need to actually resolve it to integers. See if that gets me what I want. No, it doesn't do anything. Uh, is that the right variable? Game. It's a method. So that basically um, advances the ripple animation frames once every four game frames. It's kind of what I want, and that way... Ah, the input animation, input lag still happens. Maybe just a function of the fact that it's 24 frames per second game. Probably shouldn't worry about that. So I could do a couple things. I could go back to like an eight frames per second game um, speed, or I could just leave the throttling. We have the throttling in place right now, so let's just leave that. Man, one day I really do need to change that out of bounds stuff. Let's make a note about that. To do wrap. Set dot with out of bounds protections. Basically, I think I can refactor these into two function calls and a couple assignments, and then put some logic for um, checking whether it's you know the chords are less than zero or greater than twenty three. But we are 13 minutes in, and that is probably good for now. Sorry if you were hoping to not see refactoring. I can understand how that would be not fun, since you probably have to do that in your day to day. But trying to get us to a spot where we can have a more sane environment to work in. So. Thanks for watching. See you next time.